The color correction process is a combination of both technical and creative adjustments. If your footage was improperly exposed or balanced, or you want to enhance the look of your image, here are some ways you can do it using Adobe Premiere Pro. Open the color workspace to access the Lumetri color panel, which includes a number of different adjustment tools. Next, go over to your source window and open the Lumetri scopes so that you can monitor your levels while you color correct. I recommend displaying the YUV vector scope, which tells you the amount of color or saturation that's in the image, the Luma waveform, which shows the levels, and the RGB parade, which displays the color balance. You can't always trust your monitor's calibration, so these scopes will help you make accurate adjustments. Now, you can start color correcting. If you're color correcting on the fly or only want to make some basic adjustments, you can use the basic correction tool. You can auto set your white balance by using the eyedropper tool to select a part of the image that should be white, or you can set the white balance manually by adjusting your temperature and tint. In addition, you can adjust your tone by moving the sliders for exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks, and increase or decrease the saturation. Under the Creative tab, you can apply a look to your footage. This is typically done after you've corrected your video and want to add a certain look to your film. There are a number of looks to choose from, and with each one you can adjust the intensity, faded film, sharpness, vibrance, and saturation. The Curves tool is similar to the tone sliders in the basic correction, but with more control when adjusting your levels and temperature. With the RGB curves, start with the overall or global Luma levels. Just like the sliders in the basic color correction tool, you can create points and adjust the blacks, whites, midtones, highlights, and shadows. Be sure to keep your blacks above zero and your whites below 100. Any information beyond these points will either be over or underexposed. This is where the term S-curve comes into play. The more dramatic the S-curve is, the more contrast your image will have. Next, you can adjust your color temperature using the individual red, green, and blue channels. You can use the Luma waveform and the RGB parade to monitor your changes. The hue and saturation curve allows you to increase or decrease a specific hue's intensity. You can make large selections to adjust a wide range of colors, like a blue sky, or smaller selections for more specific colors, like leaves on a tree. There is no limit to the number of selections you can make. If you're not satisfied with the adjustments you've made, simply double click on the line to reset. Similar to the RGB curves, the color wheels allow you to make exposure and temperature adjustments to the shadow, midtones, and highlights individually. For each tone, you can increase or decrease your exposure using the sliders and change the hue using the color wheels. With the secondary color corrector tool, you can create a customized mask in your image that you want to apply additional adjustments to. To make your mask, Grab the eyedropper tool and click in the area that you want to select. Next, turn on your mask to view your selection. Refine your mask by expanding or narrowing the sliders for the hue, saturation, and luma. You can also add blur to soften the edges of your selection. Once you have defined your mask, then you can start applying secondary adjustments to the levels, temperature, contrast, and saturation. The last tool in the Lumetri panel is the Vignette. Like the Creative tool, this effect is usually applied after you've finished color correcting. The Vignette is typically used to highlight a specific part of the image or create a more dramatic look by darkening the surrounding edges. You can adjust the amount, which controls the vignette strength, the midpoint, which controls the size, the roundness, which controls the shape, and the feather, which controls the softness. Again, you can always reset by double-clicking on the slider. You can check the before for each tool by selecting and deselecting the checkbox on the right-hand side. You can also turn on and off all of the tools in the Effect Controls window. 
The color correction process involves a lot of trial and error, and everyone has a different preferred method. Therefore, it's best to practice with each tool before you define a desired workflow. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tutorials. You can also check out the Pond5 blog for an in-depth look at color correction. And as always, head over to Pond5.com to find millions of videos and other assets to use in your next project.